Hi, I'm John Fakara. Welcome to Fakara Classic. We're here at the garage at Wingnut Manor. We're going to give you an update on what we've been working on. Next to me is the illustrious mechanic Matt. Say hi, Matt. Hello. There we go. And today we're going to talk about what? The 914? Not the 914. We did the 914. The 914 6 IMSA car made it to Lufticult, but we'll do a video on that. At the end of this video, we're going to show you how much the thing weighed, but this video is going to be on. The 928. The 928. We've had a lot of work done to him. Matt's been really busy. So let's take a look at what we've been up to with the 928s. So let's get right into it and start looking at what we've done to the 928s. I've got my 78 dream car here, the Euro car, and we've got the Devic car inside. And the first step to what we've done is we're going to switch all the Devic stuff onto my car and then my stuff back on that so we can roll it out here and sell it at some point. So let's take a look at the first thing we did. And by we, I mean Matt. Matt's been very busy and he swapped the brakes. So these are the brakes off my 78. And you can see they're a nice ventilated brake. It's a single piston or single pot caliper. And what that means is only one piston that's compressing it. And back in the day, that was probably plenty of brakes. This car's top speed was, I think, 140, 142 miles an hour back in 1978. And uh, to shrug off that speed at a you know, car that weighed around 3,000 pounds, not too bad. But later on, the cars got heavier by about 300 pounds. They also got faster. Top speed got in the 160s. And they needed a bigger brake. So by the late 80s, 10 years later, they came up with this. This is the brake setup from a 928 S4. Now the S4 was much more powerful, had a much higher top speed, so they needed a bigger brake. And this is a four pot brake or four piston brake, so there's two pistons on either side, creates a massive amount of clamping force on this huge rotor. And the rotor is also about twice as thick as the one that's on the 78. Now, the reason for that is when you hit your brakes, you're changing all that kinetic energy into heat. Now, if you have an electric car or a hybrid, you're taking all that kinetic energy and turning it back into electricity. So those brakes last like 250,000 miles. But in a regular car, you're just turning it into heat. So brakes are bigger is always better. A bigger rotor, thicker rotor, heavier rotor, dissipates the heat much, much better. So with this front brake and the rear brake is another four pot caliper, this thing's gonna stop on a dime. I'm really excited about these brakes. And while we're here, another thing we swapped over was the suspension itself. Now these are coilovers that Devic came up with and coilovers mean there's a coil over the shock and it sits on a little perch here. And what that does is it allows us to change spring rates if we want. Now, we're not going to change these right now because they were made for a 928. But it also has adjustability in the shock, so we can adjust it in two different ways. And we can change the preload on the spring by moving this perch up and down, and also the ride height just a little bit. So a lot of adjustability here. We, basically, what we did was just take the entire front suspension off, including the A-arms, and just swap them. Because the nice thing about the 1985 and the 1978 they're essentially the same car. Everything goes back and forth. If this was a later vehicle, it would be a little bit more difficult. But fortunately, just a direct swap. So we got the big brakes and the awesome suspension. Now, what I want to show you on these brakes real quick, which is kind of really clever, it's super simple. I like good engineering. You'll see this plate right here that they added later on. And what that is, that was for the air coming up through a vent in the front, which hit here and then go in and hit the back of the rotor here, they actually cut a hole in the back of the backing plate. So it's all about heat. You wanna get the heat out of there so it allows fresh, cool air to blow inside. Now the earlier cars didn't have that. And I thought that was a great addition. And I mean, literally just a little plate, super simple to make. On the front of the car, they added a spoiler. Now, a lot of you guys, noticed, and I'm quite proud of you, that my 78 had a spoiler on it which didn't belong. No, it didn't. The owner, previous owner at some point, added these. These came out in like 1980 with the S, 928S, and they did add a lot of performance to the car, but one of the little benefits is they had these cutouts in the front that created a vent space that forced air to the brakes. So I'd like to have that without having this. I'll show you why I don't like this. 
I never like these because they fit like that. They cover the original body line of the car with this big black nonsense and it, I think it looks dreadful. So I don't want that, but I do want the vent. So we're gonna have to figure something out with that. While we're talking spoilers, let's take a look at the spoiler on the 85. And the reason is I wanna give you a quick primer on what a spoiler is. I see it a lot on the internet, people talking about spoilers and calling them wings. Wings are not spoilers, spoilers are not wings. What this is designed to do is spoil the flow of air over the car. Now, usually when you have a spoiler on the back, it kicks the air up. You're talking about the air moving behind the car, you're trying to control that air flow. So you spoil the air with a spoiler. That's what it's designed to do. A wing is like a wing on a plane. It is a two-sided device where the air flows above and below and it can either create lift or downforce or nothing if it's completely neutral. And one of the most famous neutral wings ever built was on the Lamborghini Countach. That giant V wing actually didn't do anything except create drag and slow the car down. So most of those wings you see on cars are purely aesthetic. They don't really do anything. They just kind of make the car look cool. But a spoiler always does something. And the spoiler on the front and the spoiler on the back of these cars actually stabilize it as speed as the cars got faster. Now my car is going to be completely clean, so we'll see I have to address that at some point, maybe figure out some kind of way of stabilizing the car as I get faster and faster. But I'm not a big fan of the spoilers. A little geek fact is these spoilers on Porsches and on other cars, they're kind of made out of this like rubbery material. And I always wondered like why? Why didn't they make it out of aluminum or fiberglass or something? Why is it spongy? The reason is Germany has a department just like the United States Department of Transportation who dictates how cars are built. And they said that any protrusion from the car had to be soft in case of an impact with a pedestrian. Now, I don't know why you'd be driving your car backwards into somebody, but that was the law. So you get these kind of foamy, weird spoilers. If you look at the spoiler on the 930s, the T-Tray, or the whale tail, they have this rubbery bit at the back of them. That's why that's on there. Is it the best material to use for you know, a race car? No, but for a road car, that's why it's like that. I always thought that was kind of cool. Um, I, I thought about maybe like, could we make one ourselves out of this stuff? We'll see, I'm, we're not there yet. Let's transfer everything to the other car before we start making new parts. So I think the next step is to go underneath the 928, the 78, and see what other things we swapped from the Devic car. So here we are under the 1978 928. And you can see the beautiful suspension we got here, but I'm gonna show you the other bits from the Devic car that we swapped on. We'll just start at the front. Underneath here, this is the sway bar. It's massive. <laughs> this is the, the Devic sway bar. And this thing is absolutely enormous. Now what a sway bar does as you go through the corner, it keeps the car flat. So when you see a car kind of heave over, that the sway bar then forces, because the wheels are connected to each other, forces the car to stay flat. So the bigger it is, the more rigid the car is in a corner. That's going to be fun to see how that performs. The next thing is, are these gorgeous headers here. These came off the Devic car. Now the Devic car had a 32 valve engine. This is the 16 valve engine. So it's slightly different. Uh, one difference in it was that this header actually is farther forward on the 16 valve engine. So we had to add about an inch and a half of pipe here so that these met up correctly to this exhaust system. But we got these beautiful headers. These headers on like eBay are thousands of dollars. That was worth the purchase of the car right there. But also came with the Devic car was the entire exhaust system. We got a couple of tiny little cats here and goes into a massive three inch pipe into a couple of Borla mufflers. And they did actually a really nice job putting this together. And just, we wanted to just bolt it on. Now it wouldn't just bolt on because 78 was a one year only car when it came to exhaust. Here's the original exhaust down here. This giant box sat underneath with these twin pipes, but what made it unique were these brackets. These brackets were here to hold the exhaust up. Now normally, 
and what this exhaust has is just a tab on it which connects to the body somewhere on a little flexible joint. But for some reason that I haven't figured out yet, Porsche decided to bolt the exhaust to the transaxle on the battery box. So this is 78 only. They made a battery box that bolts on right onto the, the face of the transaxle here. What they went to later, literally a year later, was they just made the body come down in a little bucket here so the battery sat inside of it and they hooked the exhaust up to the side, which makes total sense. That contraption, the exhaust was hanging on this. Look at the distance here. Look at the leverage this has. So the exhaust is hanging on this, which is pulling on the diff. It's now, sometimes the Germans get it wrong and they got it really wrong with this one. The leverage on this was massive. So luckily I have two 78 cars. This is the battery box off of the other car because all these points here and on the back where it bolts on, there were all these stress cracks. It literally was ready to tear off the car. I think to kind of alleviate the leverage on the battery box, because a normal battery that fits in here is a little over 50 pounds, which is a lot of weight to hang off of it. We're gonna get a lightweight, probably lithium battery to put in here, which will weigh about 15 pounds. And that will solve some of these problems. So if you ever wanna know if, it's, if it is a 78, just crawl underneath and look for this ridiculous battery box. Now, one bonus we got out of the debit car, which I didn't know until we jacked it up and started playing with it, was the transaxle, the differential in this car is a limited slip diff. Now, my car, the original diff on this is, was a open, which means one wheel can spin independently. You'll see people peel out with the right, go, just going, that's an open diff. Closed diff, a limited slip diff, We'll both will force both wheels to spin, which increases performance and traction. And they're relatively rare on the earlier cars. So we've got a five speed manual limited slip dip. We put that in. And what that required was the changing of the torque tube. This is one of 928's pretty interesting engineering features with the torque tube. What the torque tube does is actually bolts the transaxle to the engine. They're hard mounted together and inside is there's a drive shaft and the drive shaft's only like an inch big it's a tiny little thing but it connects the two of them but the distance between this and the engine changes depending on if you've got an automatic or you got a manual or it depends on what clutch you're using uh, so we had to swap the torque tube as well out of the 85. this car is interesting uh, because the early cars had twin clutch I mean, I know that sounds like a very modern thing that you have a twin clutch uh, transmission. This is a 1978, they were twin clutch. They, they swapped to a single clutch later. So the 85 was actually a single clutch where this is a twin clutch. Um, so that also messed with the changes, the, diff the difference of distance. But we got all that solved. It's all bolted up. And I mean, I'm really excited to hear what this exhaust sounds like and what the suspension does and how the brakes work. I mean, it's getting more and more exciting to finally drive the car. But what I wanna do now is show you a couple of things up top about what makes this a European car. I keep saying European as opposed to a North American car. So we'll take a look at that real quick, top side. So what makes a European car a European car? Because nowadays, most of us have grown up later on who don't know anything before the 90s that all cars now are just pretty much what they call world cars. The same, we get the same car that Germany does. Back then, they were very different. The rules were very different, and especially in performance, where the European 78 made 240 horsepower, the US version made 219, and that disparity continued into the 80s. So getting a European car was a hot thing, and you could eyeball them pretty quickly from a couple of things. One was this rear fog light down here. Um, in Europe, you can push a button and your fog lights in front come on, but this comes on so that people can see you in the deep fog and don't run into your rear end. Uh, you'll see a lot of people driving around the freeway now who have their fog lights on. They have a European car and there's a bright light in their brake lights because they have no idea that there's a rear fog light on their car. But I've never liked the way this looked. I'm probably gonna put a US rear end on this so it's smooth, 
but that's European. Um, another thing that they did, they, they made a lot of adjustments to the cars when they came over to make them DOT compliant. And one of them was to put rear marker lights on. There was a red marker light on this corner and they had to drill through the car. We'll have to fix that and smooth that over. Eventually the marker lights came and they were built into the car like here. So US cars, red in the back, amber in the front. There were none on the European cars, but what they did have, and I still think this is the smartest place to put a turn signal, they have a turn signal right here on the side in the middle. My Jensen Interceptor had that, a few European cars I've had had that, and it, it really is the best place because the person who's next to you can see the flashing light and knows that you're coming over, but that's only on the European cars. And there were other DOT adjustments they had to make. One was, you'll see again, the smooth bumper back here, they had to add bumper lits to the US car. I don't know why, like this is gonna make a huge difference in your impact, but they put these big rubber bumpers on the back of the US cars, which I think ruin the nice smooth rear end of these. So European cars, no big bumpers, which is what we'll do when we swap over. We'll make this as smooth and pretty as possible. One thing that they did, as far as crash protection, there, these doors are all aluminum, by the way, which is really nice. US required door bars, and if inside the doors of your car, big honking bars that are usually welded up against the door in case of a collision from the side. These didn't have them, it was required, so they would put door bars in. And what this is, it's just a steel pipe. They put some styrofoam behind it to keep it rattling. But what is the terrifying part of this is the bar is too long, I guess, to fit in the door as one piece. So they put it in as two pieces and then welded it in the middle to make it work. Now, all that's gonna do really in a side impact is that thing's gonna like snap off in the middle and you're gonna have two pipes coming <laughs> in to stab you. And I'm like, no, I'm a hard no on that. I'll be removing those. So no bar, no door bars for our car, but that is a very typical US installation, a very, you know, horrible afterthought and probably tremendously dangerous. Uh, just a quick note, you'll see these little tubes up here. These are, this is for the door locks, which are operated by vacuum, by air. Uh, which, you know, instead of putting just an electric cylinder in there, this is all vacuum based. Most of the time they don't work. We'll see if we can get it to work, which is kind of cool. Another thing you'll see on pretty much all European cars, a gray market, you'll hear that term. Actually, I'm gonna do a video on gray market, the, what that all meant and the cars that came in under gray market. But they all had tags on them like this that show you where they came from, the per name of the person who imported it, and all the information instead of the VIN tag. And that is usually a really important piece of information if you want to get the car legal in the US now. But my card's got it. I don't know who that guy is. I've been trying to find out. Someday he might pop up. Who knows? Other things in the European cars that might be obvious, some of the gauges in my car are still in German, um, and that's not a problem. I'm actually gonna keep those because that'll be a lot of fun. And I think now what we'll do is finish with the 928s. I think that's enough. I think you guys have enough for now on the 928s. We'll be moving forward with that. And we'll finish this video by showing you the weight of the 914 six GTU car. I put a question in the comments in the 914 video and people could guess how much they thought it weighed. So how much do you think it weighs? Because we're going to find out right now and the winner's going to get a t-shirt. I'm going to do some of that in the future where I'm going to ask in the comments a question and give you guys a free Fakara Classic t-shirt. So let's see how much the IMSA car weighs. Here we go. All right. We've got the 914 six on the scales. You'll see little scales underneath each of the tires, and that's how we weigh the car. So it's on the scales. How much does it weigh? Let's find out. Drum roll, please. 1,960 pounds. And you can see on here, you can see the different weights at each of the corners, which we'll be playing with a little bit later. Now let's go on the interwebs and find who was the closest. And the closest is, and I'm going to mess up your last name, and I apologize, Daniel Seely, or Seely, uh, you won, and you, you guessed 1,950 pounds, which is only 10 pounds off 
well done. You get a Fakara Classic t-shirt. I will be doing more of those kind of giveaways in the comments coming up. So if you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, tell your friends, help us grow the channel. We'll do more of this kind of stuff. We got more videos coming up. I'll be trying to put one out every week for you. And uh, I hope you had a nice time with me. I hope you got your geek on and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.